Well, a new movement is sweeping the country. It's a movement away from standardized testing. People like their children to be educated. They have a thing about that. They also dislike the way they're currently being educated by and large. Garfield High has suddenly become the center of the revolt against standardized testing. Learning's not broken, but testing is pretty broken. You know, the way that we measure learning has been pretty broken. And I think that's, that's a general consensus at this point. There are kids left behind because of it. And there are kids that are dropping out of school because of it. The dropout rates are tremendous. And if you think about this generation of kids that is being lost as a result of that testing environment, it gets very scary. So it started actually in a very unusual place, um, which is a, a bunch of researchers and foundations trying to tackle this big problem of assessments. This hypothesis that our education system is focused on rote learning, memorization of content, that's the current state of education and how do we transform that? So these very, you know, studious researchers all pointed to video games. There are a lot of game developers that are parents now and they're starting to see their kids learn. They're starting to see uh, what their kids are encountering in the education system. I think the education system is starting to realize we feel like we're competing with this barrage of entertainment that's around kids nonstop all the time. And I think initially that was shocking to them. And you know, TV is the enemy, video games are the enemy. They're starting to see what if we could actually harness that instead of making it an enemy. So it's actually a, a sort of parallel maturation. Both the education system is maturing into not seeing video games as the enemy, and game developers are maturing into seeing there are things we could do with games other than just pure entertainment. I made games for kids her age, uh, and a little younger, I guess. So going all the way back to the 1990s when I was designing the uh, first Spyro the Dragon games. So the, the idea of educational games was not something that, that occurred to me for most of my career. The first time I made that connection between video games and learning was talking to Lily's teachers. Okay. And, and realizing that I could actually have a slightly deeper conversation with them than the typical parent. Because in many ways, the teachers and I were in the same business. And neither of us realized it. We wanted to come to this like highly stimulating environment to kind of see how our game, which is also science fictional based and Mars based, would stand up to things that are as distracting as a jet chair, you know? This is the first time that we've actually seen the full flow of the experience because it's kind of an adventure game with these Pokemon-like components, uh, how it all comes together and does the flow make sense, what parts are engaging and stuff like that. So, Do you mind if I take notes while, while you play? Okay, that's what I'll do. Yeah, so it should start off by itself. <laughs> yep, and it's Hero, that one. Hero was our opportunity at Glass Lab to build a game from the ground up based around a competency. We had arrived on um, argumentation through some studies that our learning designers did, but what the player experiences is you are uh, a kid from Earth who's just arrived at the first school on Mars. And here in this city on Mars, uh, they have a convention where the way that they make decisions in groups uh, is based on reason. And they uh, build these argubots, which are matched to different types of argumentation. So you have a, um, we have an authoritron, which is the argument from authority, and uh, like a consequence bot and an example bot that are all the different types of robots you can master that are different forms of argument. And you equip them with evidence and you battle them against each other, and that's how you win arguments in this place. Oh. It says, oh, that's weird. You had the map open a second ago? Yeah. It was acting a little bit weird. Okay. I think, or, or can you go back to it? Yeah. I know it's hard to get out of here. Today was my first time playing the game, so I saw all the bugs and they were fresh in my mind. So uh, I guess it was kind of fun to help them see the issues and try to get past them. It's helpful for us to watch uh, kids play when they're, especially when they're new to a certain type of game, and to watch the behavior patterns that they have. Every time that you play with a new person, you see other assumptions that they're making that are just as valid from the interface itself. And so that's that's all this little tweaking and polishing that we need to do to make it. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Oh. You've finally seen it. Yeah, I've been hearing so much about it. <laughs> what they would do, I don't know if you guys saw this, when they think that they will lose if they have a poor position, 
they're going to take the best evidence. So the game itself, like the structure of it, is causing them to say, I need the strongest evidence or I'm going to lose. The telemetry we get from games, that vector has process information in it. What are the things that you're doing as a player that we could use as evidence that you're thinking about that system in a particular way? So there's a way that we're, I think, um, if we're doing it right, we have the right resources, we're able to be responsive to kids um, in ways that we haven't been able to before. And the hope is that kids feel that, and that makes a difference. Whenever I'm making these games or helping to make decisions around these games, um, you, know, you always want, as a designer, you've always got somebody in mind uh, for what you're making. And I always have somebody in mind. You know, it's really simple. It's like, how would this help Lily? Or maybe this might frustrate, frustrate Lily. And you know, I want to think of a little bit more of an everyman customer, but you know, this is a good, good place to start, for sure. We were hearing from kids who playtested for us, this is the first game I've played that has told me that my decisions matter and that I might be important as a person. This game reminds me of the real world and they've just never experienced that before because they're surrounded with games that are constantly putting them in a fantasy place. We should be teaching people to be critical thinkers. We should be teaching them to question and uh, to analyze and also to gather evidence and, and think about the world around them. If that's an idea of education, then to me that's a very powerful thing that any creative medium could do, or a video game especially.